Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk to you about some of the main college types in the United States, but I also wanted to mention a few specific cases that are very unique to America that someone coming from abroad may not have heard of. My name is Lilia, and on this channel I share my experience as an international student in the United States. Thank you for joining. Shall we get started? Most colleges or universities award four-year degrees, although some students may graduate a semester or even a year early, but let's focus on the majority here. So the first college type will be public universities. They usually have the word state in their name or may say University of State X. So for example, University of Michigan or Michigan State University are both public universities. So American citizens usually get a tuition discount to go to a university located in the same state that they live in. That is because public universities receive most of their funding through federal funding and that's why they give a discount to the taxpayers of that state. Now unfortunately that does not apply to American residents living in states other other than the state where the university is located, and this does not apply to international students either. Nonetheless, public universities can have great scholarships, including out-of-state students and international students, and I know multiple international students, especially coming from Russia, that got great scholarships to attend public universities in the United States. Now, the most important takeaway is that public universities are usually somewhat easier to get into than wink wink private universities that's going to be the second college type that we're going to cover here but should you get in you might still get a slightly lower tuition discount than if you were to go to a private university now private universities they typically should not contain the name of the state in their name and are usually named after the person who founded that university for example purdue university which is private was founded by john purdue and is located in the state of indiana now enough with the names once you start exploring these schools more and more you'll get a better grasp of which schools are public and which are private just based on their name private universities still do receive federal funding but they primarily rely on private donations now the negative is that private universities are often harder to get into than public schools but as you can guess already the advantage is that that should you get into a private university, they're more likely to match your tuition needs. Therefore, do not get discouraged from applying to private universities or colleges. I went to Albion College, which is private, and I received a full tuition scholarship there. And now I'm attending University of Notre Dame, but it's a different story, but this university tends to match students' tuition needs should they get in. Now, the third college type are liberal arts colleges, which also tend to be private, so consider them as a subset of private universities. But liberal arts colleges just tend to be much, much smaller in size. And again, we can compare Albion College and University of Notre Dame. Both are private. However, University of Notre Dame also gives out graduate degrees and it has over 8,000 students in attendance. Now, Albion College is way smaller and has just 1,500 students, and also liberal arts colleges tend to only give out bachelor's degrees, which is the case with Albion. If you want to learn more about why you should go to a small liberal arts college, then you should consider watching my other video on liberal arts colleges. The advantages of going to a liberal arts college are similar to those of private universities, but also they are able to give a lot more attention to their undergraduate students and you will be just a lot more supported. College type number four is historically black colleges and universities or also known as HBCUs. Those are a very unique case to the United States, but is definitely a very important one to mention here. Let me give you a few examples. For example, Howard University, located in the District of Columbia, so literally Washington, D.C., 
And then there is Morehouse College. It's located in Atlanta, Georgia. There are over 100 HBCUs in total in the United States, but those are some of the most popular examples. Howard graduated such notable alumni as Chadwick Boseman, Anthony Anderson, and Kamala Harris. Morehouse College graduated such alumni as Martin Luther King Jr., Spike Lee, and Samuel L. Jackson and I'm sure these universities are very, very proud of their successful alumni. Some of the pros are that if you strongly identify with the experience of the person of color, if you are really looking for that connection, if you want the university's student body to represent where you're coming from, then this is definitely a nice option for you. By the way, these schools accept all nationalities and races, and those are some of the most diverse universities in the United States. Unfortunately, I do not know much about these universities, and I'm not quite sure about how well they're funded. I know some of them are definitely underfunded, but I'm not sure if it's the case for all HBCUs in the United States, but I do know how they originated. Because of slavery, segregation, and racism, African Americans in the United States could not attend the same universities as white people could. Therefore, these universities were primarily founded by African Americans for African Americans. These universities remain mostly black for several reasons. One is that statistically people of color in the United States tend to be of a lower socioeconomic status and cannot afford better living conditions or better education or better higher education for themselves or their children. Therefore, people of color need equitable support when it comes to these things. And historically, black colleges and universities just might be able to do that. Another reason why HBCUs are important and have so many people of color is that they're just proud of having so many people of color as their student body because they actually represent America and they're able to influence the future of these amazing students in such great ways that other universities are failing at. If you ever met a black person in STEM, there is a 25% chance that they graduated from an HBCU. That is really, really cool. You should definitely look more into this if you're already interested and I will include some of the links that I found useful during my research about HBCUs and I'll put it in the description box below. Now the last college type that we're going to discuss today are community colleges which are two-year institutions and their primary goal is to provide affordable education and allow their students to have a smoother transition into receiving four-year degrees. For example, if you struggled academically in high school or maybe your test scores were not good enough to get you into a four-year degree institution, or maybe you just didn't get the scholarship that you were looking for and you cannot afford going to that program, then you should really consider going to a community college. This is a great option for those students who want to stay locally or for those students who want to work part-time. What's great about community colleges is that they are very affordable, but also they design their two-year curriculum such that those credits for the classes you end up taking will be transferable and fit the curriculum of most four-year degree institutions. During my search for undergraduate institutions, I came across multiple community colleges, especially in California. They were advertising pretty heavily in Moscow at that time, but I knew that I wanted to go to a four-year degree institution, and since I got a really nice scholarship to go to Albion, that's what I ended up doing. But if you really feel like a community college might be a great next step after your high school education, then you should really, really look into this. Now that's all that I had for you for today. I really hope you found this content useful. Also check out my blog post about a sixth college type that I didn't have a chance to cover here because this video can only be so long. But this is it for now and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!